Let's speak now to Paul Ingram. He's the executive director of the British American Security Information uh, Council and an expert on global nuclear disarmament strategies. Thanks a lot for joining us. Um, so just before this announcement, we've had that incident with the sailors. The Hawks say, even though the sailors were eventually released, they say the detention of the sailors was an example of Obama's capitulation to the Islamic Republic of Iran. Uh, Iran deal supporters say, see, this is how mature diplomacy works. You say sorry and no harm done. Who's right? Well, we have to, to, to answer that question, we have to go beyond just the statements to the attitudes that underlie them. I think it's quite clear that uh, from a US Hawks perspective, uh, the Republican candidates who've leapt in on this issue, uh, to them, th this is a situation where uh, U.S. Uh, sailors have been uh, captured and then released, and that that itself is an outrageous act by the Iranians. Anything that uh, limits the power of the hegemon in the region should be seen as, as an act of aggression. Uh, of course, from the perspective of pretty much any other country on the planet, uh, we live in an international system of sovereign states, and the Americans uh, by uh, the, uh, the American sailors, uh, by agreement of both countries, uh, did uh, go into the sovereign waters of Iran. Now, if, if you look at uh, past uh, actions where that has happened, the British suffered twice uh, or from, from doing similar actions, uh, and uh, their sailors were held for several days, uh, even weeks, uh, whereas this uh, the, these, sol these sailors were released overnight. Uh, if we look at a more recent event where the Russian fighter was shot down over Turkey for, inf for infiltrating airspace for a matter of seconds, we can soon see that the Iranian action of releasing sailors very quickly uh, demonstrates mm -hmm. uh, an, a move of goodwill on the one hand, and secondly, a commitment to seeing the nuclear deal uh, completed and implementation day declared later on this week. Yeah, interesting that you say that. Now let's just look a bit broader. Since the deal was announced, Syria continued to burn. Iran, you know, for its part, supporting Bashar al-Assad. You have the renewed or intensified Saudi-Iran tensions. They're basically at war with each other in, in some proxy ways in Yemen. You had the Iranians burning U.S. flags and chanting death to America when they were attacking the Saudi embassy. Um, does the deal sure. in any way have the potential for unraveling because of everything else that's happening around the deal? Oh, it absolutely does have the potential to unravel, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't want to give the impression that things are all rosy. But, you know, American flags have been burnt on the streets of Tehran for the last 35 years. Um, that is not a new incident. What is new is what you point to around Saudi uh, reactions, which are in large part motivated not only by the conflicts in Syria and Yemen, which, well, certainly the Syrian conflict is not new. The Yemeni conflict has got worse in the last few months, but, but is motivated as well by the Iran deal itself. The, the Saudis are very worried, uh, not just by the fact that there are going to be tens of billions of dollars uh, entering into the uh, coffers of the Iranian government, uh, their own money, the Iranians' money, but nevertheless, money that they can then use in these conflicts regionally, but also because they are worried that uh, the West uh, and their allies are starting to see this conflict between Saudi and Iran in much more balanced terms, and they're, they're less questioning of Saudi's relationship and, and actions in these conflicts. And this is extremely concerning from Riyadh's perspective. So Riyadh is doing everything it can to draw Iran into, further into the conflict and demonstrate that Iran is not a country that acts in the interests of the West. Uh, now, uh, Iran, meanwhile, has been launching missiles, uh, testing missiles, demonstrating that it's not just a lackey of the West, not willing to just lie down and take anything. Uh, the, the Iranians are looking to demonstrate that while, on the one hand, they're willing to deal, on the other hand, they're going to continue to develop their capabilities, present a threat, if you like, to Western interests. Yeah. And, and this, in turn, angers and frustrates uh, many in the West uh, who point to these missile tests as uh, infringing not the deal, but certainly 
UN Security Council resolutions. Yeah, and so it's, it's a very yeah. complex situation, yeah. and it could go bad very quickly. Yeah, and it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out if there's a Republican president in the White House at the end of the year. Paul Ingram, we have run out of time, but thank you very much okay. for your thoughts.